So how are the elements arranged in the periodic table? Are they in any sort of order? Well, look carefully at the atomic number and mass number of each of the elements. Can you see any pattern? Yeah. If you move along the table from left to right, then the numbers get bigger. That's right. The elements are arranged in order of the size of their atomic number and mass number. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. Exactly. Now, let's look at the individual atoms which make up each of the elements. We can see that the atoms contain a larger number of particles as we move across the table. So the atoms get larger as we move along. This periodic table's a doddle. I'm glad you think so. So what about the vertical columns in the table? What do they represent? The elements are also ordered into groups. Each vertical column is a group of elements. So why are they in groups? Let's look at group one in the table. The first three elements in group one are... Lithium, sodium, potassium. Now, let's look at their atoms. Can you see any similarities in the arrangement of their electrons? Yeah, they've all got one electron in their outer shell. Exactly. Every element in group one has one electron in its outer shell. This means that these elements all react the same way with other chemicals. So is that why these elements are all organised into the same group? Because they all react the same way with other chemicals? Absolutely correct. And we'll look at why they all react in the same way later on. OK. So what about the elements in group two? Will the atoms have two electrons in their outer shells? Well, let's take a look at some of the atoms from group two. Here's beryllium, magnesium and calcium. Hey, I was right. They've all got two electrons in their outer shells. So that means that they will all react in the same way with other chemicals. And how about group three? Well, call me a genius, but I'm guessing that the group three elements have atoms with three electrons in their outer shells. Absolutely correct. And the atoms in group four have four electrons in their outer shells and so on with the rest of the groups. OK, I can see the pattern here. But what about group zero? That just sounds weird. They can't have zero electrons, can they? Let's take a look at some of the atoms in group zero. All the atoms in this group have an outer shell which is completely filled up with electrons. So helium has two electrons in its outer shell, and neon and argon both have eight electrons in their outer shells. Yes, and because they have outer shells which are completely filled up with electrons, this means that they do not react with any other chemicals. Which is why they're called zero, I suppose. OK, I've got another question for you. Why is row one in the periodic table called period one? Well, let's take a look at some of the atoms in period one. How many shells of electrons do they have? Well, they've both got one shell. Now, let's take a look at some of the atoms in period two. How many shards of electrons do they have? Well, they've got two. So does that mean in period three that the atoms have three shells? Let's have a look. Yep. Three shards of electrons. And in period four, they have four shells. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. So the rows, or periods, show us that the atoms contain the same number of electron shells. And the columns, or groups, show us that all the atoms have the same number of electrons in their outer shells. Yeah, I think I get this. There's another thing you need to know about the periodic table. Do you see that squiggly line? Yes. Well, that line separates the elements which are metals away from the elements which are non-metals. The metals are on the left-hand side of the line and the non-metals are on the right-hand side of the line. So there are loads more metals than non-metals? Yes. And you need to know that all the metals, except for mercury, are solid at room temperature and all conduct heat and electricity. And what about non-metals? How are they different? Well, lots of the non-metals are gases at room temperature and most of them do not conduct heat or electricity. So they're almost exact opposites, then? Pretty much. I think I'm beginning to get my head round this periodic table.